Yep, that's right. In this video, I will be telling you everything there is to know about Five Nights at Freddy's 2, to how the AI works, to all the different easter eggs and secrets, as well as some general knowledge. If you haven't already, check out my Five Nights at Freddy's 1 and Ultimate Custom Night videos first before coming to this one. Otherwise, let's get started. First things first, the general gameplay and rules of this game. Nights in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 last for exactly 7 minutes. Five Nights at Freddy's 2 is a bit different from Five Nights at Freddy's 1. You have three entry points in your office, the hallway in front of you, the left vent, and the right vent. The left and right vent work the same as the door lights in Fire Nights at Freddy's 1, where it acts as a moving position for animatronics. However, it's slightly different as when a character is in there, their movement opportunities just basically mean that they will move before you either put the mask on or flip the camera and will act accordingly to you. Your flashlight can be used both down the main hall and in the camera system. You can see quite a large number of characters in the main hall, but only two characters will actually enter from the main hall. The flashlight has a limited battery, and every night the flashlight battery gets reduced, which is represented with a value. The value on night 1 is 7000, night 2 is 6000, night 3 is 5000, night 4 is 4000, and night 5 onwards is 3000. Every frame you have your flashlight on, this number will tick down. At 500, the flashlight indicator will begin to blink rapidly, showing that you are low on power. For how long the flashlight will take to run out if you consistently use it, on night 1, the flashlight will run out after being on for about a minute and 56 seconds, while on night 7, it runs out after 50 seconds of use. Anyways, besides the flashlight, your main tools are your camera system, which you can use to keep track of everyone, and your Freddy Fazbear mask, which you can use to defer most of the animatronics. And that's pretty much it. Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 is a lot more simple with its office and general rules. So to explain everything else, I have to go through the different characters of which there are 11. For starters, if you haven't seen my Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 analysis video on how the AI for the characters work, I suggest you do. But basically the characters all have various AI levels for each night which determines how often they will move based on the character's movement opportunities. Every movement opportunity, which happens every 5 seconds in this game, the game will roll a random number from 1 to 20 and if the number is less than or equal to the AI level, then they will move. Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 actually has a lot of characters, so let's start with the puppet. The puppet is the most unique out of everyone, because they don't follow the 0 to 20 AI system like everyone else. They do follow an AI system, but it just indicates the value that controls how fast the music box will wind down. The music box starts at a value of 2000. Every 50 milliseconds, a certain number is subtracted based on the AI of the puppet. On night 1 and 2, the subtraction value is 2, on night 3, the subtraction value is 3. On night 4, this value is 4. On night 5, this number is 5. And on night 6 and 7, this number is 6. So given this information, here is how long the music box will take to fully unwind each night. Night 1 and 2 will last for 50 seconds. Night 3 is 33.33 seconds. Night 4 is 25 seconds. Night 5 is 20 seconds. And night 6 and 7 are 16.67 seconds. Once the puppet escapes the music box, it pretty much acts like Power at Freddy from Final Fantasy Freddy's 1. Which, if the case, it's every couple of seconds, let's say 5 seconds, there is a 20% chance that he will kill you. The puppet can actually take up to 2 in-game hours to kill you, but don't count on it. Now to explain how the rest of the cast works, starting with the toys and ending with the withers. Toy Freddy follows the 0-20 to 20 AI system. I should also mention that every single character works in 5 second intervals for their movement opportunities. Interestingly, Toy Freddy is the only animatronic whose AI level decreases throughout the night. On night 1, his AI level is 2 by 2am. Two on night 2, his AI level is 2 by 1am. On night 3 and night 4, Toy Freddy is not active at all. On night 5, he starts the night with an AI level of 5, but at 1am, this is decreased to 1. On night 6, by 2am, his AI level is 5. For movement patterns, he is pretty simple. He starts on the show stage, moves to the game area, then progresses down the main hall in two stages before entering your office, where he attacks in what we call a blackout sequence. In a blackout sequence, the character will remain in your room for 5 seconds while the light flickers and a buzzing drone plays. The amount of time that any blackout animatronic will give you to put on the mask depends on the night. Night 1 gives you 1.667 seconds. Night 2 gives you 1.333 seconds. Night 3 gives you 1 second. Night 4 gives you 0.917 seconds. Night 5 and 6 give you 0.833 seconds. And Night 7 gives you 0.75 seconds. From night 5, any animatronic will force your camera down when they enter the attack phase. If deferred by the mask, Toy Freddy will return to the show stage and try again. Toy Freddy is technically the only toy animatronic who attacks using a traditional blackout sequence. Toy Bonnie is quite a unique character in terms of attack. For starters, here are his AR levels for each night. On night 1, his AR level is 3 by 2am. On night 2, his AR level is 3 by 1am. On night 3, his AR level is 1 by 1am. 
On night 4, his AR level is 1 by 2am. On night 5, his AR level is 2 the whole night. And on night 6, his AR level is 5 by 2am. Toy Bonnie moves from the show stage to party room 3 or 4, and then to party room 2, where he will attempt to enter through the right vent and attempt to attack from the right vent opening, which can get super dicey as anyone who has played 10, 20 made will know. If no other animatronic is waiting to attack, then he has a 50% chance to leave the vent every 0.5 seconds. If an animatronic is waiting to attack, however, this changes to a 33.3% chance every second. In some instances, this results in a fully unwound music box. Talk about a little bitch. Toy Bonnie's attack is pretty much a combination of vent attacks and blackouts attacks, with him taking 5 seconds to attack once he actually leaves the vent. Basically, another blackout sequence. Toy Bonnie is probably one of the most hated characters in this game. Fortunately, Toy Chica isn't nearly as annoying. Her AR level is 2 by 1am on night 1. Night 2, it's 3 by 2am. Night 3, it's 1 by 1am. Night 4, she doesn't move at all. Night 5, her AR level is 2 by 1am. And on night 6, her AR level is 5 by 2am. Toy Chica goes from the show stage to the main hall, and then can enter the main hall in front of you, where you can see her if you flash your light. She then enters party room 1 and attempts to enter your office through the left vent. From there, you need to put on the mask to avoid her. Toy Chica has a 1 in 10 chance to leave when the mask is on, up to a maximum of 5 seconds, and then she will leave automatically. Mangle works very similarly to Toy Bonnie and Toy Chica, and is usually more aggressive. Mangle activates on night 2, and their AR level is 3 by 1am. On night 3, they disappear again. On night 4, their AR level is 5 for the whole night. On night 5, their AR level is 1 at the start, and this goes up to 10 by 1am. On night 6, it starts at 3, and then goes up to 10 at 2am making them the most aggressive toy animatronic. Mangle starts in the kids cove and then moves to the prize counter, the game area, and has two possible positions in the main hall. Also contrary to popular belief, Mangle cannot attack from the main hall. From there, Mangle will move to party room 2 and enter the right vent and will attempt to get into the office the same way Toy Chica does. However, it's easy to tell when they have left because they make a constant static noise that's audible in the office. If you fail to put on the mask in time, Mangle will hang from the ceiling in your office and from there, Mangle has a 5% chance to kill you every second that the camera is up, so if you're lucky, Mangle will never kill you, but don't count on it. Balloon Boy is the only animatronic who doesn't have a jump scare and can't kill you. Well, besides the easter eggs, but they don't count. On night 2, which is when he first appears, his AR level is 3 by 1am. On night 3, his AR level is 2 by 1am. On night 4, his AR level is 3. On night 5, his AR level is 5. And on night 6, his AR level is 9 by 2am. Balloon Boy moves from the game area and teleports to your left vent. Literally, he doesn't show up anywhere else and he will attempt to enter your office. If successful, he will disable your flashlight and laugh at you, which basically means Withered Foxy can kill you. Speaking of the Withered's, Withered Freddy is the least aggressive of the Withered's and first activates on night 3 with an AR level of 2 by 1am. On night 4, he has an AR level of 3 by 2am. On night 5, he has an AR level by 5 by 1am. And on night 6, he has a whopping 10 AI at 2am. Withered Freddy starts in the parts and service like the rest of the Withered's, and then enters the main hall, and then the hall in front of you. And you can enter Party Room 3 as well, but that means nothing. Like Toy Freddy, he attacks from the hall in front of you, and performs a blackout phase attack. Nothing really special here. Withered Bonnie is the most aggressive Withered besides maybe Foxy. His AI levels are 2 by 1am on night 3. Night 4 is 4 by 2am. Night 5 is 5 by 2am. And Night 6 has an AR level of 10 by 2am. Withered Bonnie has a very similar path to Freddy, except that he enters from the left vent, his attacks are the same as the other blackouts, except that he will never show up in the vent opening. Withered Chica is literally a carbon copy of Withered Bonnie, except that she attacks from the right vent. Her AR levels are exactly the same as Withered Bonnie, they activate at the same time, and get AR level increases at the same time. Withered Foxy is the most unique out of everyone. While he follows a very simple movement pattern, he probably has one of the most confusing AI besides the Puppet and Golden Freddy. His AI levels are 1 on night 2, 3 by 1am on night 3, a jump to 7 on night 4, 7 again on night 5, and night 6 he has the highest AI out of any character with an AI level of 15 by 2am. Now the way that Withered Foxy works is confusing. So I'm going to make it as simple as possible. Every 5 seconds, Foxy will attempt a movement opportunity with a slightly altered equation which basically prevents him from entering while other animatronics are in your office. Although, it does increase the chance that Foxy will move once there are no animatronics in your office. Once Foxy enters the main hall, an attack counter will begin starting at 50. Every time you flash Foxy, this number is reset. If he gets a successful movement opportunity but this number isn't at 0, he will then leave the hallway. However, if it is at zero, when the movement opportunity hits, you die. 
Fun fact, but Foxy can actually be stalled even if he's not in the hallway. No idea why this is the case, but it is. Now, Golden Freddy is actually really interesting, because believe it or not, but he can actually appear any night past night one. So from night two onwards, there is a chance that he will show up at any time. Now granted, this chance is so ridiculously low, and the only time it even matters is on night 6, because the chance becomes high enough for him to actually appear. Basically, the game will decide a preset AI number, and if that number is between 1 and 20, Golden Freddy will appear. However, the range of numbers is from 1 to 1000, and after that number is decided, it will then divide that number by 1000. So, yeah, really, really small chance, almost impossible. On night 4, this chance is upped very slightly, but not by much. Night 6 is the only night where Golden Freddy has a set AI level, which is 3 by 2am. Golden Freddy has two ways of attacking. The office attack, which is simple. He will appear if he has a successful movement opportunity, and you have to react like it's a blackout attack. If he's in the hallway, it's a little bit more complicated. Every one second, an eternal value is set to a random number from 0 to 10. If this number happens to be 1, and no one is currently in the hall, he will appear there. Whenever your hallway light is on while he is there, an internal value increases by 1 every frame. If this value reaches 100, he kills you. And that is every main animatronic threat explained. The only thing about Final Fantasy Freddy's 2 left to talk about is the secret characters, which has a lot to talk about actually. For starters, believe it or not, the Paper Pal actually has an AI level which is the same as Golden Freddy's AI chance, except it's 0 to 100 divided by 100. Technically, he can only appear on Night 7, but I'm not 100% sure. Basically, if he succeeds, he just chills in your office. Nothing too simple. Shadow Bonnie, or whatever his actual name is, is super simple. He has a 1 in 1 million chance to appear every time you flip down the monitor. If he appears, after 4 seconds, the game will crash. Now to explain Shadow Freddy, JJ, and the Endoskeleton, who all actually work much the same. Every time that you put down your camera, a random image value is set to a value from 0 to 1000. If this number is 3, the endoskeleton will appear in the left event. If it's less than or equal to 100 and no one is in Cam 8, Shadow of Freddy will appear. If it's less than or equal to 100 and the marionette is out to get you, the endoskeleton will appear in the prize corner. If this number is 9, JJ will appear the next time you flip down the monitor. And that is everything you need to know about Fire Hunter Freddy's 2. If there's anything else I missed and you want to know about, leave it in the comments below. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe to see my Final Fantasy Freddy's 3 breakdown when it comes out. And if you haven't already, make sure to watch my Final Fantasy Freddy's 1 and Ultimate Custom Night breakdowns too. They're good videos as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.